in the shadows, you can see that there is blue seeping in. Why is there blue in these shadows? The white colored light, when it casts a shadow of, on a particular surface, there is a secondary light source, which you probably are not aware of. Hello, Ami. I know you're wondering what I'm trying to do here. All I'm offering you is the truth. I have two choices for you. You take the red pill. You take the blue pill and life goes on as usual. You wake up believing whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. If you want to know the truth, hit the like button and let's begin. <laughs> Well, hello and welcome my dear Artma Army. This is Venkatesh and in this video, I'm going to be taking a 2D illustration and turning it into something that looks 3D using lighting concepts. I'm going to be talking about three things. First is form, second is ambient occlusion and third is lighting sources and how they affect an artwork. Now, if you're in the art space, it helps to have some depth of knowledge, developing an eye for what you are looking at and being able to analyze stuff so that you can appreciate the art better. If you're doing the same thing as everybody else or your friends, then how are you going to get better than them? My intention is only to help you because I win if you win. I'm going to walk you through the entire process and also talk about these three concepts in the middle and stay till the end because the end is going to be really, really helpful to you. Make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more such videos to start off let's begin by making rough shapes and then trying to place different parts of the character using gesture lines trying to draw these shapes if you have not watched previous videos on this channel i have explained this process very much in detail you can go ahead and watch them um, i have also added a little friend for pepe called zeus here and you can see now i start making selections and filling in color for each of the element on this character. You can use the lasso tool to make these selections and fill them all on one layer. If you choose to, you can always do this on separate layers as well. It helps to keep the background on a separate layer so that you do not mess the color or mix them up with the character itself and can change things accordingly. Now comes the line art. Now the line art can be done before or after. I have done this after just because I prefer this method of doing things. You can always go ahead and make the line art before and fill in the color inside of the character. Uh, you can take your time, make changes as you go along. Be slow with your line work. And another thing that you can always use is rotate the canvas as you feel fit in order to get the lines to be clean. I made another copy of the same artwork without the line work and indicated the lighting direction to show the forms of the character. What do I mean by forms? On the screen, you can see that there are simple shapes in front of you. It's a rectangle, a trapezium. These are two dimensional objects. If you extend them in another dimension, you it becomes a cylinder, cube and a pyramid, right? So these are three dimensional objects. You can show that by using light and shadow. When we look at complex object, what ends up happening is you can break them down into simpler forms and simpler shapes. There is a circle. There are two other shapes. If you combine all of them and add lighting accordingly, it becomes something that looks 3D. Now converting Pepe, the character into something that looks 3D. For it, you have to understand what the form of Pepe looks like. In the front view, the shapes look different. The shape changes slightly as you move the character around. If you know this, you can also estimate what is the flow of the form that is on it. This is the face of Pepe and you can see the contour lines that I have drawn on top to show you what Pepe looks like in the three dimensional form, where the bulges are. So you will be able to add lighting and shadow accordingly. The simple method of showing forms on a certain character is to use highlights and shadows. Now highlights are facing the direction of the light and shadows are on the opposite side of it. If you know something is flat, the shadow will be a certain way. If you know the object is curved, then there needs to be blending that you have to do in order to show them the transition in a smooth manner. Now different light sources cast different kind of shadows. Let's talk about that. Now to understand lighting on an object, you need to know what kind of lights exist and how they affect the object of focus. If you see this, there is a light source and the direction in which the light is going, the shadow is forming right around it in the direction opposite to where the object is. You can see if sun 
sun is a small light source and it casts a very hard shadow and you can see that right here it has a hard edged shadow because the light is straight coming from one point and it is getting spread like this but you take the example of a cloudy day the light gets diffused meaning the light is spreading all around the object not directly coming from one point but it is spread across because of which what happens is the light or the shadow becomes very soft but Venki, why are you talking about all this technical stuff? I just want to draw and have fun. Stop being a crybaby. If you look at the work of some of the pro artists and wonder how their art looks so good, it's because they have their fundamentals in place. And that's what you also have to learn. What's coming next is going to be super interesting to stay till the end. Because we have flat colors that we have used for different parts of this character, you can make selections using Magic Wand tool to select that particular color and then go ahead and paint with a shadow shade on top. It becomes very easy to do it this way. While doing shading on Zeus, I just want to emphasize on the importance of how you do your blending, the direction in which you are making your strokes and how you use your brush strokes in order to give the form a certain detail and a certain level of finesse. This takes time. You are seeing things done at almost 5x, 6x the speed that I was actually working on. So take your time and make sure that you are paying close attention to all the little details that you are putting into your piece. Now comes yet another topic of interest which is ambient occlusion. You can see that I am adding these dark areas in between different objects. What is ambient occlusion? Let's talk about that. The different fruits that are in front of you, you can see that objects that are touching each other in the corners, the light cannot penetrate. Light falls on objects, it reflects off different surfaces, but it cannot go into the crevices or the corners of the object. If you look at your hand, if you close your fist, you can see that the corners where the arm or the fingers are closing, there will be very dark places. That is the result of ambient occlusion. On the left, you have an image that does not have ambient occlusion, but when you add ambient occlusion, they look like they are all part of one scene. You can see that image on the right does not have ambient occlusion. It looks a little faded, but on the left side you can see with ambient occlusion the dark corners between one part and the other part are very clearly defined. So in places when objects are touching each other make sure that you add these darkest shadows. My favorite part of any artwork is drawing the eyes and the highlights are my favorite part. They lie in the direction of the light on the surface and the glow in the iris comes in the opposite direction. I often try to be playful with the color of the irises. I've used orange for Zeus's character here. Wait, what? Why did you turn the grass blue? Well, there is a difference between what you think you see and what you actually see. Let me explain. Look at this image. Look at the shadows in particular. What is happening with the shadows? What's the color that you're seeing in the shadow here? Is this something that is dark, black or brown? No. You can see that there is blue that is seeping into the shadow. In the shadows, you can see that there is blue seeping in. What is going on here? Why is there blue in these shadows? For this, you have to understand some lighting concepts. See, there are two lighting sources in this particular image. On the left side, there is a pink light. On the right side, there is a blue light. Now, each of them are casting a shadow in the opposite direction. So the light source, which is stronger, wins over the other color, which is the weaker light source. If you see this side, there is a red light source. It is lighting the cube. And on the left side, you are seeing a red light. On the opposite side, the shadow of the red light in that area the blue light is winning this is the secondary light source it wins in the shadow area on the left side you have a red wall and the shadow that this sphere is casting the red surface is acting as a secondary light source light is reflecting off of it and again going into the shadow you can see that there is some red here on the other side the light is bouncing off of the blue surface and then there is blue shadow happening here you can see the same thing happening on this object as well. This side, the blue is not penetrating, but the red is penetrating. This side, the red is not penetrating, but the blue is penetrating. Now, what happens in a real world scenario? On a sunny day, what exactly happens? There is a sun, which is the primary light source, no doubt about it. It's the white colored light. When it casts a shadow of on a particular surface, there is a secondary light source, which you probably are not aware of. The sky, the sky is a widespread blue colored light source which is casting light on every surface 
and wherever there is shadows that are formed by the white light the shadow is lit by this blue light which happens to be the secondary light source isn't it fascinating the sky is acting as a blue light source which is reflecting off of the water and that's why water appears blue now this can come in handy when painting with light you can set a new layer to multiply and using a mask you can go ahead and erase that blue color that you have applied as a multiply blend mode and you will be able to see that light comes back into the piece what i'm doing here is erasing off parts which are supposed to be lit by the sunlight and leaving out parts which are shadows cast by the character on the ground you can reduce the opacity to change the level of darkness that you want Similarly, I'm going ahead and adding some brightness to the sky and adding few more details like the clouds in the sky. To show the effect of the light source on the sky, I have gone ahead and added these bright marks and changed the blend mode to color dodge, screen. You can experiment with them to see what works best. This is done on a separate layer, of course. That's not all. The light falling onto any surface is also reflected back. So in this scenario, the grass is reflecting the light from the sun. In this image, you can see that the red, pink and yellow colors are reflected by the surrounding area. You need to add the reflecting light on all surfaces facing that direction. Now we spoke about how blue seeps into the shadow regions and that's what I'm trying to do here for all the areas that are in the shadows. Making the shadows saturated adds a little bit of punch to the colors that you use. By now you're probably able to understand that this process that I am taking is a lot more complex and a lot longer than the flat illustration style artworks. So why do I do it? Apart from the fact that I like torturing myself, the fact is that I like to create this style of art. It is something that makes me happy and in the long run, my hope is that this will get recognized because these are all NFTs that I am creating. If people look back on the art and they are able to understand the process that goes behind it, maybe it is me doing the right thing by my collector. It satisfies my desire to create the kind of art that I want to put out in the world. And that's enough reason to do so. I hope you found this video useful. Many concepts like this and a lot more is part of Atma Creative Society, the art program that I run. More details about it are going to come soon. Make sure that you keep checking the links in the description for more such content. And as I always say, stay strong and keep creating. I'll see you very soon. Bye bye. Have a good day.